Aleluia! Aleluia! So, did you notice one thing? That pastor introduced you for a short while ago. You think, oh, very nice words about John Johnson. But he was talking about you. Hallelujah. Because you have a fire inside of you to release the fire of God to this world. Amen. Is it not inside of your uh, DNA? Oh, I can see one do like this. In Danish, that's, yes, it is me. Hallelujah. But it's also you. We need to release the fire of God into this world. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But thank you, Pastor, for this. <laughs> hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, worshiper. Really, really good. I have uh, some scriptures I would like to read for you. But one thing I want to tell you before anything else. I find the, the small notes I have written in my, for a long time ago. And I just find it. And it's totally fixed into what I'm prepared to, to talk to you. <laughs> it's very... Actually, I was looking, you was, pastor was finding some scriptures, and this was exactly there. So, wow, this is for now. <laughs> you know, if you go from here to Herning, uh, if you take the old way, there's uh, in Lin, there's a factory in Lin, and the, 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 the brand or the, the name for the factory, they store outside with the road with big, big letters, number one by nature. I like that. You know why? Number one by nature. This is exactly what you and I, we are. Amen. Number one by nature. I think when I saw it first time, I take this. This is for me. Hallelujah. It's maybe a good, uh, I don't know what they are making in this factory, but, but it's for me. I am born to be number one. Do you know that? Because Christ has paid the highest price for you and I. And He is number one. And because you live in Him and He is in you, then you are number one. Hallelujah. I think that's a very good number one by nature. Ah, oh, hallelujah. I remember one time, <laughs> I'm not the big runner. I, I always like to run and play football back in Copenhagen, you know, we are in the house we was living, we have we, the houses, we have some football team, so we are playing against this other. But I'm a good runner. So I remember one time in, in, in school, we have some uh, a day where we have a lot of kind of athletics, uh, you know, we was casting and we was running and jumping and every kind. And I was uh, supposed to run, uh, I think it was 400 meters. And it was okay, I was running. And I, some, you know, they run only to win. And I was not that fast. And all suddenly, all the, the rest, they was far away. So we was only two uh, uh, in the back. And I start when we was running, I start talk, talking to him. So then he think, I don't, something uh, just hit him. He think, I will not try and talk to this guy. I want to run, so at least I will not get to be the last one. So I think, then he starts running. What is going on with him? Let me follow you. But then, you know, Johnston was coming as the last one of all this. I was totally, whew. I have no breath. I have no, you know, uh, I couldn't understand why would he not talk to me. It was a very good conversation. We was running there. You know, it doesn't matter with all the rest because we have a, job, a nice time running here. But I want to tell you one thing. We are number one by nature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> 
Tak, Jesus. Halleluja. Thank you, Father God. And you know, it could be a very, very, uh, some big words to put into our mouth. Number one. For me personally, I have always think that I'm number shock. You know, the last one in the team, that's me. Because I can do nothing. I'm just a small, you know, boy from Copenhagen. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm, my arm is not that big. And, uh, you know, I, I have many crazy thoughts about myself. So I was always thinking, sometimes if I step into a room with a lot of human, uh, if I could go inside the wall, then it would be very, very good. Because then nobody could see me. I was there almost, but I was inside the wall. Because the picture I have by myself was almost nothing. I could not see the picture of myself. So, you know, the way I was thinking of myself was, well, Jan, you are nothing. Well, you are the... And, you know, crazy thoughts was running in my head. But I know for sure that today I am number one by nature. Even that time when I was uh, running in the wall, of course I could not be there. But even at that time, God saw me like number one. And you know, sometimes there can be things in our life where who try to put us down, to hold us down, to try to, to you know, put chains our, around us so we cannot do anything. But one thing I want to tell you this evening, you are number one. You call to be number one. Hallelujah. I, I find uh, some small um, seeds from a big pine tree. I don't know if you can see them. There's two here. If you look at this one here, most of it is a little bit, little uh, uh, wing, to, so the wind can, you know, take it. This little bit, try to just send it around. This small seed, you know, when, when, when the tree releases the seeds, and the seed is going out to the wind. Maybe the seed's thinking, oh man, the, oh man, <laughs> everything is, there's very, very uh, far away down there, and it's, it's, I'm out in the very big world. What can that be out of me? I'm just a little bit seed, you know. I'm absolutely nothing compares to all the rest. And maybe when the seed is coming down so, so, and touching the soil, you know, it looked on the grass. It was looking at, oh, the grass is very big. Uh, everything around me is very big. And what can that be out of me? But you know what? This little seed have all it needed inside of it to be number one by nature. A big pine tree. And it's called, inside of this small, 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 small seed, there is a power enough to bear fruit for many, many generations. Hallelujah. And this small seed is you. Sometimes we can look at ourselves and think, oh, you know, I don't know what you're thinking, but sometimes we can, you know, but God, God looks at you as number one by nature. When God looked at you, he's not looking at this small seed and he's thinking, hmm, I, whew, can anything come out of this, you know? No, that's not the way God looks and talks and thinks about you and I. He is happy when he looks at that small seed. Because he know exactly what he have put inside that small seed. Hallelujah. So we need to be rejoicing. We need to be full of uh, joy and, and rejoicing. Because inside of you and I. Isn't it fantastic? Inside. 
there is so much power that you and I, we can bear fruit for eternity. For eternity, God has put his own nature and DNA inside of you. So there is enough inside of you to bear fruit, to grow up and be a big, big woman of God, man of God, to fulfill the plan God puts inside you of you. Hallelujah. And I have done that many, many times when I look into the mirror. I say, oh. Not now, of course. <laughs> but in my younger day, I was, can I be honest to you? One time I have a big mustache, very big, and it was red, you know, real men <laughs> have a red mustache, of course, of co or at least, of course, if you are a Dane, sorry, brother, <laughs> but if you are a Dane, you need to have a red one, then you are a Viking, you know, and uh, so I have a very big mustache. And when people saw me, almost like Christian, and maybe you have been red also when you was a younger, uh, but you know, so I think people see my big mustache. I was a small man, but they look at my big mustache. So they can see my, at least I have something that is uh, big inside me. But you know what? One day a man of God told me, we have, in a powerful meeting, I was nearly saved and, and uh, then, you know, I was hiding about, behind my big mustache. I was taking the mustache as my identity. So, because my picture, as I was to said, said to you a moment ago, the picture about myself was very, very low, almost no picture. You could maybe, if you were lucky to find it, you know. But one day I just <laughs> took the mustache off. And I, I was thinking about myself. Now I'm looking like a little bit of school, you know, back in, in the tredje A, you know, and uh, just a small boy from the school in Copenhagen. And it was very, for me, it was very, very hard because I need to have this mustache because then there was a little bit of think, think, think inside of me that was big, you know. But God started to work at me. And you know, it, it has nothing to do with what you try to look like that makes you big, that makes you number one by nature. It has nothing to do with what you think you can do. No, it has all to do with what I have put inside of you. The way I have created you, my DNA, my uh, creation, my nature, the power I have put inside of you, that's the one that makes you number one by nature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And isn't it fantastic? Oh, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very happy. Of course, we can work things out, the gift of God, you know. But it's all come from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you can follow me. I'm doing my very best. <laughs> I, I'm still speaking school English, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Ah, oh, yeah. You know, in this season we are in right now, there's a lot of people, Christian people, who should think about themselves that they are number one by nature. But because of this coronavirus, a lot of Christian people, a part of the body of Christ, are thinking about themselves. You know, what to do under these circumstances? Oh God, we hope you will save us in time like this. 
God, please. You know, they almost they are, are, are fighting together with the mouse to get first inside this small hole in the wall, you know, because inside of there, maybe Corona cannot come inside of there. You know, they try to hide themselves. But God wants us to, to lift up ourselves in the faith of the Lord, in the word of the Lord, lift up ourselves, speak right about ourselves. We are not called to be a mouth, mouse. We are called to be a big eagle. Hallelujah. That can see a mouse from 100 meters. Do you know that? We have a mouse in a, a, bird, on a, a bird in Denmark. We call it musbo. It's a big uh, bird. And it can stand still up 100 meters. That's okay. Up. And it can see a small mouse in the grass. And then this bird, moose bone, also go down and take this mouse. That's what you and I we are called to. Take the mouse, eat the devil, hunting him. Hallelujah. Instead of he's hunting us. But you know, a lot of people are thinking about themselves. Uh, that we are nothing in this coronavirus. What can we do when COVID-19 is here? Oh, I, I understand people in the world can, can have fear. Because the sickness, when it hits you, it's not very funny. It costs many people their lives, you know, so it's a serious thing. But for you and I, if, you know, ah, hallelujah. Maybe I should read what I'm planning. Hallelujah. But you know, many people are thinking of themselves that they have the spirit of fear. They start shaking when Corona is here. And then Sunday morning, they may be, if it's possible to lift the right hand and say, Thank you, Jesus. But God wants us to be over our circumstances. Hallelujah. And how can we lift ourselves up over the circumstances? By speaking the right words. Hallelujah. I remember one time when uh, our prime minister was closing all down. And I'm, I met a fantastic man. His name is Christian Boas. He said to me, Jan, are you under the blood? Yes, I am. That's good. So I will give you a hug. <laughs> so he gave me a big hug. Hallelujah. I could say, yes, but what about Corona? I hope you can follow me. But it's very important what we are thinking of ourselves. And speaking of ourselves. Hallelujah. Because God has not given us. Isn't it fantastic? Has not given us. That means that God has not given us. Now I give Pastor Stephen my car, my key to my car. But I could, I could talk about, I will give it to him. But he's still there. So I have not given it to him because he's there. And God has not given to us a spirit of fear. It's not, a, it's not us. God has not given us. But a lot of men, a human being, body of the Christ, are, are trying to, you know, uh, 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 I don't know why, but I feel fear, you know. And maybe, uh, but God has not given us the spirit of fear. It's absolutely, absolutely not a part of you and I. Hallelujah. And that's the way you and I need to act in this season. I need to tell you one thing. Maybe you know it. But Corona is nothing. Comparing to what the next is coming. More is coming. And if we are shaking now, what are we going to do when the next virus or what it can be are coming?
because we're living in the last day. And things are coming to the, the earth. But you know what? We are number one by nature. We can not be shaken. Hallelujah. And maybe you're thinking, I, 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 I have been shaken many times, John. <laughs> I want to tell you one thing. Right now you're looking at a, you can think, wow, what a nice guy. Hmm. Oh, okay, you're just looking at me. But in the same way, because this body can't be shaking. Yeah. I have been shaking many times. But you know what? You're not only looking at John right now. You're not only looking at me as, as a human being, as a Dane, as... No, a young man in this nation. No, you're looking at a temple for the true and living God's spirit. Hallelujah. I am a temple of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is living, is dwelling inside of me. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you one thing. This temple cannot be shaken. The temple of God is not shaken because of Corona or because of whatever things can, you know, uh, many can uh, threat you and talk bad things about you. Oh, but the temple of God and you are the temple of God. Isn't that fantastic? Um, I, to be honest, I think it's really, really wow. Imagine, here I am, a man from Copenhagen, Scandinavia, Denmark. Maybe you're following us uh, far away. Imagine I can be a temple of the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because I've received Christ. And this temple, oh, it cannot be shaken. It cannot be shaken. It cannot be shaken. Because the foundation is on the word of God but I can as a person sometimes be shaken yeah because uh, you know this we live we are not from here from this world but we are still in this world so we are surrounded the spirit of this world are doing everything is possible to shake you to Put you down to bound you to put cha chains around you to shout your mouth and do anything it's possible to make you nothing. So yeah, we can be shaking as a, a human being, you know. But if I go inside this temple and if I make, you know, using time together with the spirit of God. Which I am a temple for. Oh, then nothing can shake me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, sometimes there can be things around us, the circumstances around us try to. Hold us down, put us down, uh, close our mouth, and whatever it's possible to make you, uh, you're just silent. <clears throat> and sometimes there can be things in your own life. I have found out many times that uh, sometimes I have a weakness in my body. Let me give you an example. It's only a week ago, or maybe two weeks ago. I was work, uh, working in, in Herning in, in, in a park, and I, there was an old man. He was walking there with his dog. And I was working there and built some uh, small bridge over a little lake. And then he stopped up and said, well, yeah, the old one was, you know, old, so I need to make a new one. Yeah, he was, so he was start talking to me, and I was talking to him, and... So he said, yeah, the, the walk today was shorter than normal because I have a lot of pain in my leg here, in my knee, you know. And I, 
And uh, I feel handicapped, he said. So it was a short, uh, short walk this morning. Oh, I said. You know, the first thought I think was because the way he described it was exactly the way I could describe it. I have pain the same places. I feel, you know, ah. Oh. So the first thought came to me. You cannot pray for him because you have the same uh, symptoms. So you better just smile and uh, yeah, hope it go over and say something nice to him. It was the first thing that came into my m- mind. But then I think, hey, <laughs> you better leave. Because a thought like this is not from the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. No, you cannot pray because a thought like this is never from the kingdom of God. And then it came to me, of course you can pray. Hallelujah. But as I said, circumstances around us try to put us in a box. We, we need to be all in this circumstances box, you know. But it's time for you and I, and it's time for the body of Christ to get out of the box of circumstances and step into the box of the kingdom of God. And this box is eternal, and it's all over. Hallelujah. So I said to this man, can you for a short while just see me as a, not a man who works in this area? Because I believe in the power of God. Can I pray for you? Oh, Yes, please, he said. And then there come a lot of bad words in the same second. So I just kneeled down. And I said, and also in this corona time, is it okay for me to put my hands in your trousers? Yeah, 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 no problem. You know, some things, if I put my hands there, then the virus will go up here. Oh, then I'm... Okay. <clears throat> so I put my hands on his knees. And I said, in the mighty name of Jesus... Okay, I was praying very really loud and polite and, you know, <laughs> I put my hands for exactly the same symptoms that I have by myself. So I said, in the name of Jesus, I commanded pain to go and I commanded the healer of God to come right now. So I said, how is it? Because I, I tell you, Pastor, I could feel such a warm a heat came out of my hands. I could really, you know, it was very, was it winter? Then it would be very good because then I have warm hands, you know. It, I could really feel, the, feel warm. So I said to him, how is it? It feels very, very good. And then he do like, you, I will give you a corona hog. <laughs> so he gave me a corona hog. And he was standing, you know, social distance. Uh, but still, you know. Uh, and then he walked. Uh, but what I'm trying to say about this is, the first thought came to me, no, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. Because you have the same symptoms, so you cannot do that. You need to be f- totally uh, healed in your body before you can do anything. No. Let me tell you one thing. In the same second I prayed for him, I took it to myself also. I commanded the healing of God into my knees. Hallelujah. Can you follow me? Hallelujah. Can I give you another testimony? I don't know about this man. He was walking. The wife was calling. And you know, no, you don't know that. But as a man, when wife is calling, you know, you better go. I need to go home. No, my wife is going to die. Uh, I, but you know, another time, but he has such a f- good feeling in his needs. So I believe that God will uh, touch him. Hallelujah. I think when he came home and uh, have coffee and breakfast, you know, uh, there was have fest, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. For some years ago, it was in, uh, I think it was in 2005, four or five there around this I was working as a in a, a big garden in in another part of Denmark cutting trees down in a, a big garden and it, it was an old copy that has sold this house to another and I was working you know with my chainsaw and I was yeah I was I remember when I was kneeling down to put uh, petrol on my chainsaw and then I said, Father God, send some people to me today. I need, you know, 
someone to pray for. Come on, Jesus. I was totally alone in this uh, garden, and he was out on the country, and no one is, you know, a long way from everything. But all suddenly down uh, an old couple, couple, the man was walking very really slowly, and he has his wife under his arm, very slowly. And uh, I was sitting close to the house, and with my chainsaw, put uh, gas on, you know, petrol, and... Uh, uh, then they was close to me. I said, hi. Hi. But in the same second, I say, hi. I tell you, I feel some, what is it, dune for English. Blanket. I felt someone put a big blanket over me, you know. I was all the... I will do nothing. No, I will not say anything. I will just, you know, I will not... I will I'm almost not here. I have a feeling that I will just keep my mouth shut because uh, who am I to, could, to do anything? How could I talk and how could I maybe ask them to pray for them? And five minutes before I asked God, send something, someone into my, uh, uh, close to me so I can pray for them. And then God sent someone and they oh, oh, I tell you. And then they leave. And then I was falling on my knees and I was crying and I said, God, please forgive me. Ah, I've just asked you to send someone on my way. Uh, but when they are here, but God, I've asked you to send them again. Then I will pray for them. You know what? Next day, the same couple. The husband has his wife under his arm very slowly. There was 80 some older people walking down a small hill, you know. And I said to them, Hi, Ian, hi. I need to tell you one thing. I am a believer. I believe in the power of God. Can I pray for you? Oh, yeah, that would be nice. The husband said, That would be very, very nice. Thank you. I have a pain in my leg, he said. We are elder people. And I have a pain in my leg. I can't walk pretty good. And my wife is blind. That's why I hold her on my hands. She cannot see. Okay. You know, and I, I'm wearing this. I have tried to drive a car without. But no. <laughs> I would like to have a normal eyes. But you know, I could have think, oh, because of the circumstances you are, you are wearing glasses, your eyes is not that okay, so you better c calm down, you know, please. <laughs> but I was, you know, I could just feel the Lion of Judah was racing up inside of me. So I was kneeling down and praying for this man. And I said, pain go. And I commanded the healing of, healing of God to touch him right now. He was smiling all, oh, oh. What's happening? He said, that's very good. Oh, man. Uh, okay, hallelujah. Oh, he was not saying hallelujah, but because they don't, they don't know Christ, you know, but he was very happy. And so I said to this, uh, his wife, <clears throat> I, I, I have been working, so I was dirty, I was sweating, you know, and my finger was not that clean. So I said to her, normally I will put my hands on your eyes, but I will not do it now because it's, you know, not that clean. So, so let me take you in them, your hands. So, I hold her hands. And it, there was no social distance. I was very close. Very close. So I said, eyes, I commanded you to open up right now. Now, I said. You know what she said? Wow, you have glasses on. Wow, the first thing she noticed was that my eyes were not that good e either. That was the first thing. But so I could have stopped. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, I should never have because my eyes is not that good. I could have stayed inside the box of circumstances. But God wants to put us outside this box and be free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So she, oh, she was smiling. Ah, nice glasses. You, actually, you have a nice face also. She was very, very happy. And then the next day, the husband was 
by himself because they have a cat, so they need to give their old cat some things to eat in the house. And then the husband was going down there. Da, 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 da. Hi. Very, very fast, you know. <laughs> so I said, hello, how is it today? Oh, I tell you, this morning, he said, for the first time in many, 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 many years, when we are sitting and having breakfast, we have a small table in the kitchen. And for many years, my wife could not see me. I have to say, darling, your coffee is close to your right hand, and here is the milk, and I, you know, I need to help her every time. But all suddenly he said, this morning, she looked at me, and she smiled, and we were smiling, and have communication through our eyes this morning. So he was so happy. And he said, you know what, we was in... Um, Plant school, I don't know. A place where we can buy a lot of plants for the garden. And normally you know all this uh, with the water. Vanslanger Ilse, please. Huh? Host. Water host. It was all over. And normally I need to say, come on darling, you need to lift your foot because the water host is there. Come on darling. There's another one. Now there's a step into the house and you know. But this morning he said to me, he wa she was walking like this because she saw everything and she was so happy and you know, hallelujah. What I, why I'm dealing this testimony? Because I could have stayed inside the box of circumstances and think, well, but you are, you are not healed yet. You still have your own uh, things in your body. But God wants to, that you and I are closing our eyes to our own body and step out of this box of circumstances and step into the box uh, of God, of the kingdom of God and releasing the fire of God and the healing of no anointing of God into the circumstances. Hallelujah. I hope you can follow me. Ah, hallelujah. And I need to tell you one thing, because we are stepping into a new season. Maybe you think, of course, Jan, the day tomorrow have never been here, and it's almost here, so of course it's a new season. This season we are stepping into as a church and as the body of Christ. Something new. God is working with his own body. Hallelujah. Sorry. Have, have you noticed? And can you feel it? He's working on you. Okay. I, I can feel it. I know he's working on me. I know. I have said to him. You know what, Sahodaran? I have said to God, God, everything's inside of me which are not pleasing you. I give you authority to take it out of me. Hallelujah. And sometimes I have a feeling like, you know, like I'm on the hospital for an operation. And all the lights is there. And, I'm, and I can feel God is working. You have the small knife, you know, working on your own. But it is a time where God is working on his own body. So the church of God, hallelujah, because we are called to be number one by nature. And God says that it is on time that we are starting to think about ourselves, to, that we are number one. I'm not supposed to running as the last man in the game, you know, and start talking. No, I need to be in front and take this uh, medal because I want to be number one. This is what is inside of me. Number one. Hallelujah. So God has not given us a spirit of fear. No. No. One time a guy had hit me. You have maybe maybe you have heard it. Hit me so bad. And when I get he crushed a big big stone in my neck, I was trying to help him because his car was stuck. So I have a rope in my car and try to to t draw his car free so he can go. But when I was there and put a rope on his car, 
an explosion. I tell you, I cannot describe it. A very big, big, big explosion inside of me. And I was just... Uh, the police said that I was four meter. If this is my car, if I was standing here and, you know, tear the ropes on my car, then I was laying over here when they find me. And uh, when I was there, I saw out of my eyes he was stealing my car and just pew. So normally, normally, that would be a perfect place for fear to step inside. Normally. But I was laying there and I was shaking because, and all of a sudden I could, blood was running in my, on my head. I could not see my glasses was red and if I was, I, I was shaking, I tell you, because it was very, uh, it was in February month and cold and, uh, yeah. So, uh, thank God I have my phone in my pocket. So when I was laying there, I, I could not, <laughs> I could not, not uh, raise up. I was really just, stuck to the ground. So I took my phone. And then I was thinking, what is best? Call my wife? Or 112? I was really thinking, maybe I just should call my wife. She is a fantastic woman, and she is a nurse, and she can do, but she was working, you know, so, okay. 112. So I called the the ambulance and the, yeah. And uh, some weeks after, I was walking, we were in that time, even and I was living on the country, and when the sun go down, it was dark, <laughs> you know. But I was, uh, what is, trash pack, you know, uh, I was going out to put it in the container in the, in the evening. And I was going, it was totally dark, I just knew, you know, where it is, so I could go up. But all suddenly I feel such a, a, a fear and darkness. It was more dark than the darkness. It all was come, came over me. And I was starting, standing there outside. Oh man, what is going on here? Because fear is a spirit. This fear tried to step into my life because of this accident. But when I was standing there, only a few seconds, then I lifted my voice and I said, No! I commanded you, spirit of fear, go! Because you have no access into my life because I don't have a spirit of fear, go! It was almost like the sun is shining, you know. <sighs> but, but the devil wants to put you and I into a situation of circumstances. But God wants to put us out of this box and be free in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Okay, let me end it with this. There's one thing God wants you and I to do in this season. And you know what that is? To stir up the gift. You know the scripture. We have not a spirit of fear. Second uh, Timothy 1, 7. But in verse 6, God talks to you and I that stir up the gift. Hallelujah. Stir up the gift. Release the gift. If God had put inside of you a hunger to pray for people, please start a prayer for people. Don't look about around you. Don't see, oh, what will this man or this lady or, or you, what will they think? No, just start releasing the gift of God. Hallelujah. And if God had put inside of you a gift to prophesy, instead of start shaking, then just start, Father God, I thank you for the word from your into my mouth right now. 
Hallelujah. This is a season where God wants you and I to stir up the gift which he has put inside of us. Hallelujah. I believe that we all have, have meetings where we are shaking under the power of God. I remember this uh, summer, I was in a conference in Copenhagen. And because of this uh, corona, there was no uh, prayer line up in front. So, you know, no pr prayer line. <laughs> but this man, he was on fire. Man. I tell you, he was on fire. <laughs> so so he, was, he was doing like this to the person who was sitting there. And, and the person was still looking there. Mm, what? I wonder what this Norwegian man think of me. Why is he doing that? So he was just looking. Okay. So he's running up to the next. No reaction. And I was sitting over there. And I was already ready. I was ready. So when he was saw me, I was standing there, you know. So he was just touched my hand. I tell you, the power of God took me. Simply just took me. I was under the floor. I don't know if all, I know Anita, you was there also. Uh, and I was, I was shaking almost like this. Uh, I was describing this accident. I was shaking. Not because I have blood in my head and not because, and uh, not because of the fire of God was inside of me and God put something in me. And every time you and I have been a man have, or a woman of God have laid hands on, off, on us, something from heaven. Step inside of us. And God wants us to stir up the gift. Hallelujah. So people in the world can see who are in the world, in this system, in this kingdom, and who are from the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let us stir up the gift. Amen. Step out of the box of the circumstances. And let us be free in the name of Jesus to release. You know what? What this world is needed, you have. It's inside of you and me. Everything was what this world is screaming for. What are we doing? You and I, we have the answer. So let us release it and stir up the gift of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. I think my time is over, almost there. So uh, may God bless you. <laughs>